All right, so in this episode, let's go ahead and create some users and save it to the database. So we're going to go ahead and continue with our users endpoint. So we have this post request. What we want to do is we want to send uh, some user data to this user endpoint with a post request. So that way we can save it to the database. So uh, let's just take a look at our user model real quick. So we're going to need a couple of uh, fields. So email, password, and first name are going to be required when we make a post request. Okay, now I'm not going to do any validation. Uh, I'm not going to use like any validation library. We're just going to assume that all the data has been sanitized, taken care of, validated. Um, I encourage you to obviously do that for your own applications, but just to keep this tutorial simple, we're just going to assume that all the data is going to be present when we save it to the database. Okay, let me go. Just let me just go ahead and add a couple more fields. So, let me add a last name field. Okay, now you're gonna notice that even though I'm saving this schema, and if I go into my database, you're gonna see that it doesn't actually reflect. Okay, and if I were to reference uh, it as a property, it wouldn't even exist. So let's just say hypothetically, I want to get one single user. Right. So let's, for example, go inside this handle. Right. And if I were to get one single user, well, I wouldn't be able to actually reference this last name property. And the reason why is because we have not migrated our code yet or not code. We haven't migrated uh, with Prisma yet. So every single time you make a change to your model, you need to perform a migration. So let's go ahead and do that. So you are in Prisma migrate dev. Let's just do uh, add last name user not the best name um but okay so we now have a new migration it generates a new prisma client every single time okay so let's go ahead and set up a post request now so on postman we're going to send all of those fields that we have defined in our in our uh, in our model so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and grab the request body and I'm just going to assume that all of the fields are present okay and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new user and we do that by just simply referencing Prisma the actual model that we want to operate on and so that's user and then we call the create method and then you're going to pass in an object and then you're going to pass in this data property and this data property is really just going to be uh, an object that has all the fields, okay, and its values. So basically just key value pairs. So again, we're going to assume that the request body has all of the necessary fields. So I'm just going to go ahead and map body to data. Let me just go ahead and just change the name of this to data. So that way I don't have to do data colon body. I can just do data like this just to tidy up our code just a little bit. Okay, like I said, in a real application, you would perform server-side validation, okay? But just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to assume that this data has been validated and it's all valid. Okay, so now let's go ahead and send back the new user that was created. Now let me also set the status to 201 as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's go into Postman. Let's make a post request to the slash user endpoint. So we're going to need the email okay let me also send this as json we're going to need first name last name and the last field was what was it uh password so let's go ahead and hit enter uh let's see what's going on Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, I'm not sure why. That's really weird.
Oh, okay. I know. I know what the problem is. The problem is that uh, okay. So we have this last name field, and we already performed the migration. But for some reason, sometimes, uh, sometimes it just doesn't want to update. I don't know why. Let me go ahead and restart my Visual Studio Code real quick. All right, there we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and run the request again. Okay, see now it works. I think what we need to do is we need to restart the entire application. I think when we perform migrations because it did not pick up the last name field. Okay, so everything is good. You can see that we created a new record in our database for the users table. Now, if I go into my database and if I were to manually select from the user table, you can see that our data is in the server. Okay, let's go ahead and just populate our database just a little bit more. Okay, and of course, um, in real applications, you might want to have some constraints for your fields. For example, this email field, you might want this to have a unique constraint. Okay, but doing that uh, will require you to actually uh, drop all of your data and then have it recreate again. So, uh, oh, so you have to be very careful. Okay, so the, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to just creating data. Okay, we create a couple of records in our database. Okay, we just create a couple users. And now let's go ahead and call the users endpoint with a get request. And we're going to get back all those users. And let's do one more thing. Let's go into the index.ts file. This is where we are trying to get the record for an individual user. So what we'll do is we'll get the uh, ID. So remember, this is uh, rec.query is going to be an object that has the ID as a property because that's the name of our uh, our parameter. And we can go and use that to get an individual user from the database. So let's get rec.query. Let's go ahead and get the Prisma client again. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's see, const user equals await prisma dot, uh, dot user dot find uh, first, because we want to find the first one based off its ID, but actually we can just use find unique instead because IDs, because we're using the ID. So this will be just fine. Now it's going to give us an issue. It's saying that string is not assignable to type number. So what I'm going to do is let me just do some validation. So const, uh, let's do uh, parsed ID equals parse int. And if is nan parsed ID will return a 400. Okay, and then we'll use parsed ID as the value. So that way over here, we know that parsed ID is a number. What's going on here? Okay, yeah, this is kind of annoying. Um, here, let's just do this. Okay. All right, so this will find the user by its ID. So what we'll do now is we'll do this. Uh, we'll return user if... Uh, so if the user is found, we'll return the user. If the user is not found, we'll return a status of 400, which indicates a bad request. Or we can also do 404 as well. Okay. And I personally prefer 400 because 404 is typically better for, like, if an endpoint is not actually implemented, like, if it's not mapped. So it's better to do it like that. For actual resources, trying to look for, like, user. I mean, it's up to you. I think 400 is good. But... 404, you could also do 404 as well. So let's go ahead and try to get the user by its ID. So if I pass in 500, it's going to give me a bad request. If I pass in one, you can see that it gives me the individual user, which is good. If I pass in an invalid ID, it's going to give me a 400 bad request, which is coming from line 13 right over here because we pass in a string. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how we can create resources as well as you know, I kind of went a little bit extra and showed you how to get the individual user. But, you know, these are pretty straightforward operations. So I just wanted to combine them in this one video. Hopefully, this video made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.